Amundsen entered the Arctic, he had nothing but a compass, a sextant, and a half-map chart. He had no communications, no means of calling for help, only the instincts and experience of seven men trying to outwit the ice. This was a group of people who realized that these environments were too big, too great, too strong to defeat. You had to use them. You had to uh, almost do a dance with these elements. And this new form of exploration is not without risks because you're very vulnerable. The Joa's journey into the ice maze brought them first to Beachy Island. It was the site of the Franklin Expedition's first winter harbour back in 1845. For Amundsen, it was an extraordinary moment, a chance to tread in the footsteps of his childhood hero. I had the feeling I was on holy ground. I pictured the expedition in all its splendor. The English colors flying, the officers in dazzling uniforms. Sir John's clever face full of character and gentleness. He had a word for everyone and was loved by his men. But now sadness hangs over the island. From this point, the expedition passed into darkness and death. Over the course of the 1850s, more than 40 expeditions searched for the missing men. As they did so, the once blank map of the Arctic was transformed. But no one yet knew if it was possible to navigate a route from ocean to ocean. Everything now depended on the route Amundsen took from here. His research had convinced him that the key to the passage lay to the south of Beachy Island through a channel Franklin had taken, called Peel Sound. I think the ice is clear enough. Amundsen's gamble was based on something the Norwegian sealers had taught him, a quirk of the ice that might allow a small ship to succeed where Franklin's large warships had failed. For the first 350 miles, the journey passed without a hitch. But then, at the tip of King William Island, Amundsen faced a choice. Franklin had turned west, right into the path of the pack ice that trapped his ships. What Franklin didn't know was that he could have turned east. Only during a search for him was it discovered that a narrow channel separated the island from the mainland. Amundsen believed that if this channel was navigable, it might be the missing link in the quest for the passage. But the search party that found it had also passed on a warning. From land, the channel looked narrow and very shallow. The waters that Amundsen was, was planning to sail into had never been charted, of course. They knew where the coastlines were, they knew where the islands were, but they didn't know where the rocks were, the submerged rocks. So sailing a ship into that is, is every mariner's nightmare. The only thing that's worse than hitting ice in a ship is hitting rocks on the bottom. And if the ice can drive you against those rocks, that's a nightmare scenario. Now, as the Joa crept forward through the ice, one of their vital instruments failed. We were making our way in waters never sailed. The compass, which had gradually been losing its capacity for self-adjustment, was now useless. We were steering by the stars, like the Vikings.
For five weeks, Amundsen and his men had been sailing through the Arctic's labyrinth of ice and islands. The search for the Northwest Passage was now taking them deep into uncharted waters. Then one night after dinner, an incident occurred that set all their nerves on edge. I was writing in my journal when I heard something that chilled me to the bone. Fire! 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 In a moment, all hands were on deck. It's safe. It's safe. It's safe. I'm sorry. A fire had broken out in the engine room right among tanks holding 2,000 gallons of petrol. We all knew what would happen if the tanks got heated. The Joa and everything on board would be blown to atoms like an exploded bomb. The fire was out before it caught, but it was a harsh reminder of how far they were from help of any kind. It was now September. The Joa had traveled 600 miles into the Arctic ice and within weeks, the waterways would be frozen. She was still within the narrow channel to the east of King William Island, when three days after the fire, the first of the autumn storms set in. Amundsen feared most. The Joa had run aground, and her hull was splintering on the rocks. In the storm force winds, it was safer to ride out the battering with the sails down. But Amundsen gave an order that would turn most sailors pale. Ready? He was going to raise the sails. Right, bring up the main! And risk losing the mast and rigging in the hope the gale would blow her off the rocks. Wind came in gusts, howling through the rigging. Then we started a method of sailing that none of us is ever likely to forget. And pull! Oh, Quickly, pull! Get her all! Not going fast enough! Oh. 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 Bring up the station! The sleet and spray washed over the vessel. The mast trembled, yet one thump, worse than ever, and we slid off. Amundsen had taken an almost suicidal risk with his ship, but as both master and commander, the decision was his. There is something disproportionate and unreasonable and unwilling to take no for an answer about him. He is as stubborn and fanatical as any of his rivals. You have to be to be his kind of polar explorer because he wants to do, in cold sober fact, what other people are quite content to dream about. They'd survived with the Joa intact. The expedition was now more than halfway across the Arctic, but winter was closing in. On the south end of King William Island, they found a sheltered bay where the Joa could be safely frozen in for the winter. They christened their new home, Joa Haven. Today, the settlement is home to more than a thousand people. Though they live in modern housing and are connected to Canada by a daily supply plane, their life on the land has changed little. For thousands of years we survived here. We are the igloo society people. You have to be able to know how to uh, hunt and survive from the animals that you hunt here. You have to know the animal movement, the, the, the migration route of the caribou. You have to live with the seasons to know the dangers of the land as an Inuit. King William Island was where Franklin's men were stranded and died. The few Inuit they encountered reported that even after five years on the ice, they couldn't build igloos or hunt seal. <laughs> <laughs> 